some of us. Yeah, I think really... we had a little bit of a get a little bit of a head start with the SL viewer on that. I think. I cannot wait for PBR. Man, it's looking better and better and better. It's amazing. The just, I don't know, the reflection of things. I remember years ago, my partner made me a pair of hoop earrings and took a photo of my face so that he could get, put the hot pink of my lipstick reflection in the silver just because, you know, it amused him. But now that's going to be real. Yeah, there's going to be new features that revolutionize the way that uh, nightclubs operate. You're going to see an immersion factor that you, you didn't see before with disco balls and other ambient lighting. It's really going to set it off. It will be yep. exciting. I think we're ready to kick off the show. What do you think, Wendy? Yeah, sounds good. Um, I can hop in if you'd like. Um, talk about Sinra first and foremost. I'm not sure if uh, everyone's got a chance to take a look at that. Uh, this month, we uh, launched our new Cinera avatars as part of our new user experience uh, enhancements. Uh, you can find these uh, both when you first join Second Life. As a new account, uh, you get the chance to start right on the website with customizing your look. Um, you also find the, the Cinera avatars in your library. Um, so anyone can play with them and experience them and take a look at them. Um, there's new heads, there's new bodies, as Sassy just pointed out. There's a whole bunch of other clothing and other avatar enhancements. Uh, there are more coming. Uh, this is the first the first set of Cinera items. Um, and then um, there's also a dev kit that's available uh, for clothing and avatar designers and others. Um, those who might be interested in the dev kit, by the way, um, I do recommend giving this a read. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Vix. Um, dueling, dueling uh, Earls. Um, and also, um, for more information on uh, Cinema stuff, uh, please feel free to check out uh, our blog. Uh, we've got uh, some more information on it there, as well as a, um, a link to a YouTube tutorial that Boston Blaisdale put together of uh, how to find and use and, and play with them. And that's all at that Earl there. Um, I know you can sell, as far as I know. Just like any other body. It's like making for any other body, Teresa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. I haven't actually started playing with it yet. I'm still using um, my old Maitreya uh, body and uh, LAQ head. Um, they've served me well for many a moon, so sticking with them for now. But, uh, you know, I'm going to take a look at them and see what it looks like. You know, do a little playing with it, because who knows? The body won't be much of a change, but the head might factor in because the SLUV is slightly different slightly. yeah that was my view on it too um and looking it over um i might have looked at it for a little bit before they were released and the body seems very similar for sure i'm gonna be very interested to see how those how those work going forwards certainly you know uh, the Ruth body has uh, um, probably outlived its uh, usefulness by, oh, a decade or two. Um, so it'll be nice to nice to have the new one. There were some current concerns about that, Torek, and I think they're pretty well uh, discussed in that uh, that blog post that I linked to. They do. Hold o'clock. No, the uh, existing bodies, uh, as far as we know, are going to remain. Yeah, we're we're not going to get rid of the 
I mean, we we don't tend to um, remove uh, existing content or or attempt to break it. And certainly, if we if we were to remove the uh, the original body um, completely from the system, that would break so many things, and uh, we wouldn't want to do that at all. Um, consider this a, a a new enhancement rather than rather than something that's going to fully replace what has come before. It point out something that's really, really, really positive about it um, as well from from a SL mentor perspective. Teresa can back this up probably as well, is that the Welcome Hub has been game changed since the uh, the con uh, the character creation aspect went on to the viewer before you log in. The people that have been arriving as new residents have moved forward off the landing point 50 times faster than they did the week before just because they've already done that step before they even chose their SL name. So they've just, we've already chosen our look and we're ready for, for Second Life rather than bef the week before and the month before that, they would just stand there in appearance mode for hours trying to work it all out. That can not necessarily yeah. be a no, bad thing. No, it really thing doesn't, too. Adam Burb, yeah. it's, it's amazing. The new the new yeah. um, sign up is amazing, and that's my whole point. Is that's good feedback. Thank incredible. you. Incredible. Yeah, I was just saying the yeah. the sooner we get them in the second life, enjoying the world, you know, honestly, the better. Yeah, I can recall uh, certainly when I originally started in Second Life, it took quite a bit to you know standing there on Orientation Island, um, adjusting my look back in the day. Um, before I could really even step out and even go through the tutorials. Yeah, I'm going to agree with Sassy on that one, Adam, please. If anybody has had issues with the SL mentors, mentors, the actual official Welcome Hub SL mentors, please contact Viola Mole about that with information so that they can look into it. But this might be a good time to move on to the uh, next topic, the Halloween shopping hop. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's only August, but Halloween is right around the corner, and that means the Halloween the Halloween shop and hop is coming up uh, with applications already actually now closed for vendors. Uh, the event will open October fifth and will run through November fifth. If you miss the signups, uh, don't worry because the uh, winter signups are, are right around the corner as well. So let me go ahead and put that blog here. And for anyone interested, Spirit Halloween is already open; has already been open since August fourth. I do not know for sure on that holo click, but I honestly wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, we'll have to move that conversation off topic, Adam. I know you're regular and you you understand the rules, but uh, we just can't discuss uh, you know issues that would probably involve. Uh, review of temperaments or governance and things of that nature.
Uh, but moving on to the next topic on the agenda, how many of you have uh, visited the new Motown region? What do you think of it, Tor? Speaking of events, we just launched a new Swaggernator hunt there. Some cool prizes. Also, there's an art gallery that is now part of the uh, location uh, featuring works from local resident Judy Lind India. And we got more to talk about that here. I haven't had a chance to visit it post-release, uh, but when I was there, uh, it just had a, a different kind of energy uh, that you uh, you don't see from other regions. This felt like almost way back when, and Wendy, Wendy knows more, when uh, we had more corporate sponsors, more, more big studio presence, and everywhere you went, there was signs everywhere. This company here, this company there. Uh, so it's good to see a uh, big name in with... Uh, with events and uh, feature enhancements that we've rolled out combined into one. That's a good workaround, Bunny. I know that um, there's sometimes uh, issues with it. There is a box there you can click to reload it, but I know that uh, there's some issues with uh, music licensing with different countries as well, which can cause some issues, unfortunately. Yeah, that can definitely be a problem, Teresa. Something we are looking at. Isn't Motown an events region? Mm hmm Oh, I have a question. It's a sneaky question. So you don't Go have ahead. to answer if you're under, like, some se secret. We'll just thing. keep it between us. You, okay. you can always ask. I just may not answer. <laughs> Are the Welcome Hubs PBR enabled? Because I swear I saw a metallic shirt there the other week. Not yet. Uh, Not yet. Okay. Still very much in a thought, testing you phase. Know, because uh, you put them yeah. online since PBR, it would not be crazy to have switched it on and just not announced it. Yeah, when you see PBR on the uh, Welcome area, that means it is absolutely out there on the stable channel for public consumption for everyone. <laughs> But no, okay. we are still very much considering, still in a testing phase. Yeah, okay. it's only available in a couple of regions. So I'm, we'll let Fix talk about that in a bit. Um, but uh, I will add uh, another thing. Uh, our 2048 uh, Ranch Lindenholms, um, 
if you haven't seen those yet, I mean, they've been out now for a little bit. Uh, they're proving to be quite popular. Uh, more are being rolled out on a regular basis uh, every couple of days or so. Um, so if you do want one, uh, but haven't been able to get one, uh, keep a close eye out for the new regions uh, as they come online. Uh, there haven't been any new regions for three weeks. I'm constantly helping people as a, a belly mentor who are complaining because oh. they upgraded to Premium Plus and then there's no land, there's no 248s on the land page. Hmm, we should have put some out there a couple days ago, all that looked into. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, I don't think it made it. Yeah, I'll take a look into that. Thank you for the Thank feedback. You. Uh, but Theresa do keep an eye out. Sorry. Don't go ahead. I was just wondering if in that instance, do you put them in a 1024 in the interim? Or do they just wait? I don't put them anywhere. I answer no, questions. I mean, you know what I mean? Do you suggest that they grab a 1024 or? Well, if they do that, then they have trouble seeing when a 2048 comes on the land page. Most of them are that aren't aren't um, don't have an alt to to. Um, I mean, there's a way to see things with an alt that isn't premium, but most of them don't want to do that. So, I think probably the real solution is to get more houses out if they're ready. Definitely. That's been the thing uh, we've seen since the introduction of the new Linden Home community is. Um, and Wendy can uh, add on more. The the communities are almost hand drawn. They're they're all custom. Uh, they're windy. The, there's no linear path to them on purpose because real life neighborhoods are usually not built like that. Um, so they do take some time to roll out. Um, you know, they're they're not direct clones from a previous uh, thing. Although maybe there could be a template, but uh, as you go through, you'll see there's there's just so much diversity uh, throughout the different streets, um, and that's done on purpose because. Um, from the from the get go, the, the uh, Linden Home communities has, has the revamp. The uh, purpose um, has been to really create an atmosphere and community um, that you wouldn't have seen in the earlier iterations. So um, you know, right now demand is is still far outstripping uh, supply, uh, but we've seen that on, on previous themes. Um, if you're looking for the the newest theme, which uh, just happens to be probably one of the nicer ones. Um, you, it might take a little bit of patience, especially um, if you've submitted a ticket, like say your premium plus, you submitted a ticket, um, you haven't heard anything for, you know, four to five days. Um, that's right. That's the turnaround right now. Uh, almost the same as the abandoned land requests. Um, I, I would say, you know, just a, a little bit of patience. It's going to go a long way, especially um, when you get the home, you'll, you'll see that it is your home in your little neck of the woods. And um, it's, a good chance it doesn't look like other parts of the neck of the woods. So uh, I would say, yeah, sit tight and it'll be worth it in the end once you get it. It's always open, Tor. Go for it. I, I had to type this out, but I'll read it instead. Um, our main region, uh, our commercial region, our big one, went down at midnight your time and stayed offline for six hours after a load of griefing attacks. Um, the region was in flux, so on the portal we were unable to restart it there. I filed an offline report ticket. I filed, I asked in concierge for help. I, I am the only Lyndon who was online twice with an hour apart each time that was a governance who was in busy. I AR Governor Linden twice from a neighbouring region, also two hours apart. Eventually, I managed to catch Linden on their way to work uh, via Discord. So my question to you is, being in Europe, is there anything that I could have done else that I didn't do? And how can I prevent that from happening again? Because obviously, six hours offline is, is not really terribly acceptable. Yeah, Torque, I agree. That's that's an unfortunate thing. Um, and I think you did what you can do. Um, but I'm going to raise that with folks here because uh, 
that's a long time for you to sit. And you shouldn't have to go through those many hoops. I was hoping there might be a, a, an email or something or something. I mean, I, I exhausted every single route I could, but I just couldn't raise. It was, and then if you're in Europe, it's quite frustrating if if you you guys are asleep and there is zero support, especially when the only governance online is in busy mode. So I had a question that we actually get a few times here in support. And that's uh, regions that are owned uh, privately by another resident, which uh, might be uh, laggy. Um, and if there is no ERM online to uh, request restart or restart it itself, um, we usually defer to those responsible for the restarts. But uh, there's a couple of things I wanted to put in there. Uh, one is the region will restart. Um, and we're talking about just lag. If it's offline, that's another matter. Um, if it's supposed to be online, we'll work to restore it. Um, but if it is laggy, uh, we do uh, scheduled restarts uh, once a week, uh, minimum. Uh, everyone gets refreshed onto a new host. Um, and two, and we also have a list uh, that we monitor on a daily basis of regions that whose stored memory is uh, reaching capacity. And um, you might, if you're on a region that is super busy, you might have seen one of us. Uh, pop in there and put a spiel out that, uh, hey, we notice this region is coming close to its stored capacity and we want to go ahead and restart it uh, before it crashes. Uh, you'll see those on, you know, large gathering areas, um, you know, 30, 40, 50 residents. Um, so there are ways that we are restarting it. Um, I'd say reach out to us. We'll see what we can do. Um, but we do like to at least defer to the uh, owners because uh, many have their own schedules on how they want to restart it. Plus, um, they may not want to uh, interrupt uh, other work that may be happening there, especially if they have, you know, designers in place that are working on stuff. So um, while we do defer to their uh, judgment responsibility, um, if the region has come to like a critical phase, uh, we'll definitely uh, step in and make sure it's online at least. Vix, can I ask, or Wendy, can I ask why, the hours have changed so dramatically over the last 17 years. Like, you know, a decade ago, SL uh, chat hours, concierge, all of that was m much earlier in the morning and later in the day. And now it's it's this tiny window um, that's, I don't even think it's a full eight hours. I'm, I can't recall right this second. You close at three o'clock or something. Um it, it it's really hard like for me you know i'm australian I get up at 4 30 in the morning for these meetings but if something crucial happens like with toric you know Australia, everybody on the other side of the world we're we're screwed for like another 12 hour wait until everybody comes back you know and it and it's really difficult because you can be i mean hair fair went down one year the first day two of the regions went down for like nine hours that's crazy i mean that's a long time ago but i'm just saying why did the hours change so dramatically um Never mind i don't the know bot issue yeah unfortunately i don't know why those have changed over the years um but it's a very valid point and i'm going to bring that up because uh it's a concern yeah because we're an international world virtual world you know the, that small pocket just doesn't, I mean, even these meeting times, are. I understand that you've got other things to do in your work day. I do understand that. But just moving two hours later would cater to so many more countries. Yeah, I, I hear uh, you. It was, it, it was on our, our hands. Yeah, we, we didn't make those decisions. Those decisions were made at a higher level. Um, but for what we understand, I mean, we're still very much here for eight hours. Um, we have coverage in other places uh, throughout the day. Um, so you're able to reach us from second life time, 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, and from there, we, we still have eyes on in different places. Um, but yeah, um, for those who have been here longer, um, I mean, Wendy and I have been here long enough. Yeah, we had different hours and uh, it kind of it's changed uh, due to. Uh, business needs and decisions and whatnot, but 
sadly, we, we're not able to give you a more direct answer because, um, you know, we weren't part of those discussions. Um, you know, we change along with uh, everything else. I'm, I know that's probably not the answer you're looking for. It is a good question, though. Um, but, yeah, uh, the best answer we can say is uh, we're here during most of the day, uh, definitely in the morning and through uh, the beginnings of the afternoon. Um, but if you're not able to reach us, let's say, versus over the phone or live chat, um, I'd say send in a ticket. We'll get to you as quickly as we can. Definitely here for any uh, kind of restarts or any uh, uh, dev maintenance going on so we can communicate to you guys um, any issues should arise. Yeah, we mentioned it before, buddy. Many of us are, are part of the Moon Lab. Including yours, surely. Ah, uh, Simone. <laughs> yeah, a large portion of uh, of Linden at this point uh, is remote. Um, you know, many of us have been since we've worked here. Uh, we've been remote, but that changed a lot uh, during COVID times. Um, we went fully remote at that time. Uh, we do have some that are back in the office now, so you know, by their own volition at this point. So. There is that. Yeah, like mentioned, we 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 do have eyes uh, throughout the day. Um, if anything anything should break to that nature, just because uh, support has you know their own kind of defined hours. That doesn't mean uh, we don't have watchers, so to speak. There's definitely, definitely more Linden and more presence now than ever before. That's absolute. You know, you, you, I mean, except for, you know, the really early years when we used to have live chat in, you know, reactions in world from, from asking in the drop down for help. But it, yeah, it just, it just seems that the, when you're trying to go through the actual live chat help, get a bot, then you've got to try and get somebody and and then suddenly it's three o'clock, doors close. Closing at three o'clock's really weird. Uh, I will keep this a little bit brief because um... I, fortunately, I have a dog here that's losing her mind. Um, but part of the reason why we're closing at 3 o'clock at this point is the fact that our support team is kind of concentrated on the East Coast. So our support hours are kind of focused on that. Um, that is something that we'll bring up and look into. I'm just not sure if that's something that can be changed, at least in the short term. Yeah, I'm in stealth mode. Yeah, who invited TJ? Security? Or you you literally invited me, Vex. Hey, Rochelle, we actually uh, did lower uh, region prices. Um, 
memory serves at the top of my head, I think in June. We lower the price from a uh, full region from uh, 229 to 209. Yeah, we definitely talk about it. You know, things are always being reviewed. Um, nothing is absolutely set in stone. Um, we always take feedback uh, from the Second Life community. We're always reviewing our own backend uh, policies and processes and, and features we like to roll out. So um, whenever you guys are mentioning, you know, this is too much, it's too much, uh, we relay that feedback. Um, but yeah, this was something very recent. I would say maybe not June, maybe uh, definitely within the last six months, I'm sure. Uh, right, Wendy? I think... Within the last six months, uh, we did yeah. the uh, private region update. And that included um, mainland prices as well. So those got a reduction. I actually have a mainland question too. I was wondering sure. if you own if you own mainland in one area, is it possible to just swap for another of the same size without actually having to sell one and buy another? Like, is that actually possible? Um, we don't really, uh, not really quite that way, but you can. Um, there are some cases was... where we might be able to help on that. It never hurts to put in a ticket and see if it's possible. Um, okay, because we have, you know, usually we it's not Zindra done that way. Jump. But, mm -hmm. We did the Zindra jump years and years ago. So we've got this like 6,000 parcel and it's adult. And it's just like, I'd just rather move back to, you know, a non-adult region potentially you know, if possible, but had our la land set for sale for six months, no buyers, because it's a, it should go for a good price. It just won't now because actually all these lower prices on things have actually um, hurt some people in selling off what they need to sell because it's cheaper now to just buy from the Lindens. Yeah, you guys put a ticket in on that. We can at least review it, see what you're looking at. See if we can help. Thank you so much. Hey, Michelle, another good question. Thanks for your questions, by the way, today. Uh, so I don't know if we'll be rolling out another round of uh, price lowering, um, but we'll definitely share you any news as it's being released you know, in, in the future. Um, but you you hit the nail on the on the, on the wood. Um, becoming premium plus, you get to basically skip over the condition of you having to own a full region uh, before you can own a homestead. And um, for anyone who's just looking for space to uh, put a couple small bills, a homestead is the way to go. Um, it's the same uh, size, although you are limited to five thousand prims. Um, you still get that sixty five thousand uh, square meter uh, space, which is awesome, especially. Uh, right now, it's only $109. Um, I don't know if we'll be lowering that any further. Um, but I, I think, you know, for the price and for upgrading the Premium Plus, along with the perks that you get with Premium Plus, um, I, I think that's a it's a good deal. I think it's a really good deal um, that you should probably, uh, you should consider. Uh, not at this time, Mel. It is a trade-off for uh, owning a, a region that is a uh, hundred dollars less than a full is the uh, the prim count, and it hasn't been changed. And geez, I don't know if it ever has been changed. A seventy-five dollars a month offer would be nice somewhere. Not for that <laughs> one, but like just a. Let's know, make a deal. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's that ninety-nine, ninety-five thing where everybody's like, "No, but it's a hundred dollars. Don't try and trick me." Yeah, <laughs> I look like they, 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 they were up there. Seventy-five <laughs> is, you know, somebody would work that out. Uh, when you beat me to it, Actually, I used to clear out old shopping carts. Hundred thousand dollar setup fee. There you go. <laughs> Sorry, TJ, were you, were you about to say something? I hope I didn't cut you oh, off. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was just going to say, for context, when I started at the lab back in 2007, 
uh, full region was, if I remember correctly, sixteen hundred and fifty dollars. Um, <laughs> so they have definitely yeah, come that's down correct. over time. <laughs> It was a status in such a big way back then. If a store could get a region, it meant that they were the most successful store, which meant that they got all the customers, which meant they made enough money for another region. I don't know how. Well, I might have to disagree with you on that one. Um, people not spending as much. Um, the vendors are certainly there. And um, I think that, at least uh, from my perspective, uh, returning uh, vendors, um, you know, f quickly filling up the application period. It, to me, that means that they're seeing value in returning and signing up quickly before uh, everyone else because they are seeing a return on, on their investment. Um, we just had two major events. We had... SLB 20, we also had fandom, um, and those regions were packed consistently. Um, they were taking full advantage of our new uh, event system. Uh, they were putting it to work, um, and we just saw so much activity. It was very engaging, and um, I think that, you know, coming off the tails of that, um, hopefully we see more events brought up, uh, because the, the ones that are being put on are, are definitely getting the crowds. So that's that's a good thing to see. Naya, I really don't have all the answers to that, uh, unfortunately. Um, I do know that the PBR ground textures are uh, in the pipeline. Uh, they want to get PBR as a whole um, out there and working properly uh, for everyone first, um, but that will come shortly thereafter. Unfortunately, I really don't know specifics on a lot of that from the tech side of things. Um, you know, it's something that we don't really handle on, on the support side. The tech folk would be able to be the best on that. That's a good segue for our last topic, one. the PBR sandboxes. I want to get this one out here for you guys. While we're talking about physically based rendering. So as you know, we do have some support for here at On The Main Grid with a number of special sandboxes for experimenting, uh, meaning you no longer have to go to the beta grid to try it out. So you're gonna be able to find uh, the PBR sandboxes on these regions here. I'm gonna put them on. Now, one thing to note is you're welcome to go to these sandboxes, test it out, um, have a ball. Um, and anything that you create on the PBR sandbox um, will not act the same way if you go on to uh, a normal region, one that is not uh, the ones listed above. Uh, it's, it's not going to look right because um, you know, it's made for a, uh, basically the new big thing coming out, uh, which it hasn't rolled out to everywhere yet. Uh, so these sandboxes are special. Think of them as self-contained experimental hubs. Uh, go in there, test them out. Um, but know that if you take them somewhere else, um, they're not going to operate the same yet. They will be. It just... Uh... Uh, sorry, <laughs> they will be um, workable when it goes live. It's just that things might change in between because they've already added, I think, a function to make a missive if it's black come in without a cost and things, things like that. Things are very so much in flux. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Um, we're still rolling out new iterations almost on a weekly basis. So um, 
how it looks now may not be how it looks when everything is finished and released to the main grid. But at least you're you can get your feet wet and start uh, you know dappling here and there and seeing how things look. So as we release new iterations, you can keep up with the changes and um, by the time everything's finished, you're ready to go. All the examples that people have left around give you a chance to look and see what people are doing. Even if you're not a creator, it's worth going to Rumpus and having a look if people have left things for you to look at. But you just need to make sure you're on the correct viewer. Yeah, you'll definitely want to be using the 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 current um, uh, Second Life viewer or Firestorm viewer uh, betas for uh, PVR. There's actually also a new uh, a midday setting. There's a legacy midday, which is the one that we're used to, but there's a new shiny midday that's just much prettier. No, I don't mean really shiny. I just mean it's really much prettier than the midday we've been used to for all these years where we look quite eek, but this one's pretty decent. And apparently it's the one, it's the HDR that they're actually working through. So if you get that file, then what you make in substance for PBR will look how it should look in world because you'll be using the same light setting. I suggest Vix and Wendy, by the way, that when PBR goes live, you make a check mark like a TOS check mark that says, I come in peace. <laughs> and for a week, nobody's allowed to scream at anybody, or they go to the cornfield for three days. Uh, but that's the problem with uh, the cornfield. Corn everyone wouldn't want to go there. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. But I mean, it, because it's going to be intense. I mean, there's there's so much that's going to be like crazy different, but people need to actually embrace this one rather than attacking it, I think. Homes are going to be very dark. Homes are going to be very dark, but that's reality if you don't have lights in them. But that's going to be quite startling. Uh, that is still being reviewed. Um, and there's not... There's some things that we can't talk about because it's still very much in a testing, you know, slash iteration phase. Um, but yeah, lighting will definitely be uh, uh, a thing of focus uh, when it's released. Um, so we'll see. Um, you know, we, we receive feedback. Uh, we also get feedback as we're testing. Uh, but we're definitely moving towards a more natural organic lighting versus uh, lighting where it's like, well, where'd this light come from, right? The whole region is lit up, but... There's no source. Um, so we're definitely moving towards uh, uh, you see the lamps. The lamps are giving off their own light. So you know where the source is. Uh, but there are, there's going to be other things uh, involved in that um, that I think is going to excite everyone when it's released. Maybe like a generic, uh, this will look decent until you have the time to actually focus on your store and what your store looks like or what your home looks like with other lighting. So that would be cool. Well, and it's, it's, it's understandable, Rachel, and certainly, you know, um, every change that we roll out, we try to do it very carefully and very thoughtfully. Um, we have had times in the past where we may have moved a little too quickly on some changes and they caused a whole mountain of problems. Um, and, you know, we learned from that. We've tried to be very cautious when, especially with a big change like um, like PBR and so forth. Um, you know, we want to make sure that it doesn't break anything terribly, um, 
that there is a certain amount of backward capability, um, that it doesn't tax people's systems um, in an undue fashion. So there's there's a whole lot of things that end up needing to be weighed against from our side to try to keep it keep everything working as best for everyone while still being able to you know move forward um, and add new things. It's always a trick. Right. Also, what things look like in PBR if you're not in the correct viewer is is so different. So when this goes live, if people refuse to update, they're just going to see a whole lot of flat, nothing textures on things. Um, and then you turn on the viewer and suddenly Dave pees a potato. Some people like to be potatoes in this world. I know, but he looks really good <laughs> as a potato. <laughs> but when well, he's second, not you in the right potato. viewer, he just looks like <laughs> the floor here. So it's it's quite startling how incredibly different it is. So there's going to be a long, I mean, when Bomb went live, everybody's screaming at everybody because they had red heads or saying, you look ridiculous or, or all these things. But this one's going to be everything, furniture, buildings, everything. So it's going to be quite amazing. Right. There's, there's always growing pains. There's always things to iron out, uh, even after release. Um, uh, we're advised, hey, keep a lookout for any any feedback regarding anything bug-related. Um, let us know if anything crops up. Um, and we tell you guys that. Um, release is here. Let us know your feedback because, you know, we want to hear from the residents. Um, and we send that up. You know, we say, you know, we were hearing about this and that. So your, your voices are definitely relayed. That's good feedback, Dark Over. I'll see if they can't uh, do something in one of the rumpuses to to terraform that for, for some water in there. It's also going to be an amazing thing to see. It's, it's going to be one of those ooh, ah sort of moments because now instead of people baking on shadows and reflections onto everything we own, where if you want to put it against a wall in one corner, you can't because of the reflections or the shading, so you have to put it in another, now it won't matter because it will be on every all 360 of that piece. Like that's going to be the amazing thing you know, no longer having baked in sh shading and stuff like that. I've said it before, I'll say it again, Bunny. They really just don't have a leg to stand on over there. Thank They'll you. never get old. <laughs> it never got old the first 15 times I've said it. Dark over, though. Wait until you see reflections. It's going to be a depth that, that's just going to blow your mind.
don't know if you're going to see fish <laughs> unless some put fish in the water. <laughs> Only if Abe Vigoda is around Hull o'clock. Oh, and, and also um, because of PBR, if an item is mod, you'll be able to tweak some of the things yourself. So you can make metal look like metal or um, uh, plastic look like plastic yourself. You'll be able to have that control, which is really exciting. People will be able to sell textures for people to do things like that because there won't be baked in shading yeah metallic plastic um those things are just going to blow minds uh, it blew my mind when i first saw it I, I just rezzed out uh an old motorcycle an old motorcycle i had years testing uh border crossings and the uh the chrome on the pipes just popped and just like like someone just re-rendered it it was amazing so I started resing out everything that had a metallic uh, uh, cover, you know, old armor, things that I like, sword. It was just like, wow, this is just going to, this is going to change the game. I hate that term though, that figure of speech changed the game, right? But man, it's just going to really set things off. It can't change the game, Vix. This is a platform, not a game. <laughs> Oh, we're, it's a game changer. We, we've been told at the Welcome Hub now, if people do refer to SL as a game, we have to just let them think that. Just pat yeah, them on the head like, and say that they're there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not like we don't we don't do things randomly in our life where we go, "Yay, four hundred thousand items in my inventory, winning." <laughs> yeah, I really, I don't, if someone wants to refer to it as a game or not, honestly, I'm not too, I'm not going to be pressed about it as long as they're enjoying themselves. If, it, if it's their game, I mean, that's the thing, you know, some people go home and they play WoW or they play, uh, you know, Star Citizen or something for four hours and some people go home and they they play Second Life for a few hours. I mean, if if it's... I guess maybe the the term game has aged differently. It might be one of those Webster things that, you know, we need to reconsider how we view the word game now. Honestly, that it's getting murky, right? Because you can log in, you can go to casino play games until you're broke. <laughs> or you can go to our new social, uh, social casino, play games until you're broke. Or you can go to um, uh, the realms, right? And just play until your eyes bleed. There's, there are games now in Second Life that you can log in and just have a ball. Yeah, you can play Greedy. Yeah, Greedy Greedy. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I used to play WoW and I actually used to play Bedazzled while I was in WoW because they had that option. So, you know, I've got t uh, Connect 4 in SL. That's a game. I've got, you know, Hangman in SL. That's a game. Still gaming, Panther. <laughs> games of skill. That requires skill. <laughs> That link I posted is a shelf that I made during hair fair that I used normal text. I made normal textures for, so I decided to try it with PBR. So if anybody's interested, that's PBR with that new midday light I was talking about, and you can see the pink cube that I've just got resed above it reflecting in the actual metallic of the PBR texture, and that's wow. That's that's like bling shoes and clicking shoes moments. That sounds more like work, Wendy. <laughs> now you tell me. <laughs> We've that got about five me, minutes actually, left before, here today. Sorry, I was going to say. There's any other questions go. or comments? Go ahead, Sassy. I think you had some. I was just going to say before you go that Teresa and I are actually um, on a collab blog called Gather and Nest, and that's actually featuring. Linden homes and and land and things like that. So, 
you know, I'm going to come for you guys at some point and for interviews. So look out. Darko, I did mention uh, old items that you would put, um, let's say you have the uh, PBR viewer, um, old items will um, be affected by the uh, the change. So um, even if you're not going to be in the business of creating uh, new items to leverage the, uh, the features, older items on uh, PBR viewer or PBR region will see uh, the change. That's been that's been the cool part is taking out old stuff in your inventory in the new viewer in the region and then seeing the change. Yeah, that's I mentioned I was just pulling old stuff from my my inventory to see how it looks now. Um, and that's going to be the good thing as you don't have to wait for new items to come out. Um, some of your existing items are going to benefit from this. And like in recreating it, oh. We got a few minutes left. Any last minute questions before we adjourn for the month? Oh, let me scroll up, Holly. Let me see what you had. I think I got it. Um, okay. Some things may have a bit more reflection, um, even with the legacy items, Holly Cluck. Um, it'll sometimes depend on how much shiny has been put in an object. If something's uh, been set to a very high shiny uh, with materials, you might be seeing more reflections than might be good on an item. Um, if it's mod, you'll be able to mod that down a little bit to adjust that. Um, that shouldn't change. Absolutely, 100%. If Only when the up. mods are asleep, Bunny, then you can see the ponies. <laughs> and you can post them. You can see PBR changing how people actually look at their whole regions as well because shadows actually, like being able to make dark recesses and have corners that are lit correctly or reflecting correctly is going to make people really enjoy um creating environments for people to visit it's it's going to be it's going to wake up a lot of people's regions i think in a really positive way sorry doctor we wouldn't have time to troubleshoot that issue here but they would definitely go by way of at least a support contact we'll that we'll take a look And I think that's time. Thank you all very much for coming today and for some wonderful questions. Greatly appreciate it.
See you next month. We'll see you next time. Fourth Wednesday of the month at noon. Take care, all. Thanks, everyone.